Right, so for this video, I'm going to be drawing a uh, still life in just plain old pencil. Uh, it's been ages since I've done a still life, so I thought that'd be interesting. And I took a photo afterwards at about the angle I ended up drawing it, um, so you can uh, see sort of what I was seeing. Now, I've never really been a fan of like the measuring method of doing still lives, where you measure every little thing. Um, I tend to move around too much. Um, and the measurements end up wrong, and then trying to go by those, I don't know, I just can never get used to it. So what you'll see me do is that I start off with uh, kind of the proportions of the object, and I kind of circle that in. Um, if you've seen my other videos, my, my sketching videos, you've seen I do that to kind of help uh, place the object on the page. Um, otherwise, I just do whatever. And then, although you see me that I'm using uh, kind of a box to construct the bottle, um, really, I'm doing it more from observation than construction. Um, I'm going by what feels right, and that's just uh, years of practice uh, drawing from observation. So, basically, I'm putting down lines, and either that looks right or it doesn't look right, and that needs fixing. And, uh, then, um, here, for example, in the shadow, um, it looked off because, uh, the paper I put the bottle on, uh, is kind of bending, uh, because I made, like, a mi little miniature light box, and what happened was that, although I was drawing it correctly, it looked wrong because my mind was just projecting the shadow as a flat plane, uh, so I moved the bottle around uh, the paper behind it so that it was flat just to help with that. Um, but yeah, sometimes observation can look a bit weird um, and you have to kind of edit it. Um, of course, first you want to be able to draw well from observation. Um, but then as you get more used to it, uh, for example here, um, these lines don't exist. Uh, there is no border between the cork and the white background. Um, your mind just sees a shape. Uh, but in the drawing, uh, it's very hard to get um, a light value to make a, a, a solid line like that. So instead, what I like to do is add the line in uh, myself uh, at a line that doesn't exist, just to outline the object. So after I have the shape down, I start on the shading. And this is one of my favorite parts. The kind of painting phase uh, it's probably why i'm drawn to realism so much and i really find it calming uh, but at the same time it's also one of the hardest things about it if you're not good at drawing from observation glass bottles are the ideal practice subject there's just so much going on in terms of value that if you try to approach it from any other way the glass isn't going to look like glass you have to be able to see all those subtle little variations at first, you probably won't be able to see more than three or four values, but as you practice, the max number you see um, by the end of the drawing should increase. And um, I say by the end because even within a session, it takes a while to take in an object and observe all its variations. So that's something uh, to keep in mind. Now, I recommend you start with small drawings like this one, even smaller if you're just starting out. You'll find as you learn to observe more, you'll want more and more space. Uh, with this drawing, I can actually see more than like twice the information I I fit into it. Um, I had to uh, modify it to get the highlights to show, for example. Uh, in reality, they were much, much smaller. Um, and there's just variations in value uh, that I can't get at this size, but that I am actually seeing. Um, so there has to be some modification on your part uh, to make the drawing fit. Um, and at first that might be hard, so it might just be easier to increase the size as needed. Now, I just want to mention real quick that I'm using one 9B pencil. Um, I found over time that I tend to get into the zone, and whatever pencil I'm using about 10 minutes in is the pencil I just use for the rest of the drawing. Um, so these days I just take out my 9B because it can go the darkest. And, um, as you can see, it can produce, um, like, the entire range of values. Um, and I found the secret to kind of getting the really light ones is to have, um, a proper support for your paper. So, um, I read about this in this book called, uh, 
course in pencil sketching, I believe. I'll leave a link to it below. Um, I talked about this briefly uh, in a blog post. Um, but if you put like a stack of 10 to 15 papers, um, that makes a really nice cushion. Uh, I have them in like this plastic, uh, this really soft plastic folder. And basically it really helps with the blending uh, because all your strokes blend in and you can go uh, really light uh, even though you're pressing uh, harder than you would if you were against the table. Uh, so yeah, it, that allows me to just kind of get the entire range. The only uh, uh, con about it is that you need to sharpen the pencil a lot more if you want to get um, really uh, precise lines. Um, but I think uh, it's more than a fair compromise uh, for just being able to focus uh, and just using one pencil. So if you're considering buying a set of graphite pencils, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, instead, I think it's a better idea to invest uh, in a quality brand and maybe buy only like two or three pencils. Uh, I wouldn't even go lower than an HB. Uh, the H's tend to be really scratchy, uh, even the good brands. And even with a light touch, they end up leaving uh, like these lines if you go over them with anything darker. Um, like these white scratched lines into in, in the paper. Um, if you're unsure what hardness you prefer, uh, I'd get an HB, uh, the highest B that that brand has, and some value in the middle. So this way you'll have an idea of the entire range, and if you still feel you're missing something, uh, you can add it as necessary. Instead of wasting money on a set, finding you only use two or three pencils, and then not being able to afford replacing those. Uh, and even if, like me, you end up attached to one pencil, uh, if you do it this way and you only buy two or three, you'll still probably get some use out of the others uh, because you'll probably find there's still some times when you might prefer them, either because of a different uh, paper where they work better or sometimes uh, because of the type of drawing you're doing. Maybe you just don't want uh, the possibility of going too dark uh, too soon. Um, so yeah, you'll still probably get some use out of them. Uh, now, I'm talking about pencils just because that's what I'm using here, but I recently got a, a graphite stick, and I'm thinking of getting uh, a woodless pencil because of it. Uh, I can't say anything about the woodless pencils yet, but I sharpened my graphite stick uh, to resemble one, and I really liked it so far. If you're just starting out and on a budget, uh, I'd consider uh, getting one of those instead of regular pencils uh, just because they offer so much more versatility uh, like you can shade uh, larger areas and um, just kind of uh, be uh, looser with them. Uh, I'll, I'll probably have a, a video in the future uh, using them when I get the woodless pencils and you can see what I mean. Um, I'm only, I, I'm not using uh, the graphite stick here because it gets all over my fingers and I only have a 4B I think uh, but I'm seriously considering switching to the woodless pencils if they're any good because I'm assuming those have um, some layer uh, around them to protect your fingers from the graphite. Uh, you can put like some masking tape over the graphite stick uh, but it's still slightly messier than a pencil uh, so yeah, so back to the drawing, uh, you'll have seen I laid in that dark area, and I'll talk a bit more about layering when we get to the shadow. Um, I just want to mention real uh, quickly that I rarely uh, use my finger to smudge, um, just in this, uh, this one case. Uh, the bottle uh, had a very dirty look, and I kind of wanted the look you get when you smudge your finger. Uh, but usually, as you'll see me do now, uh, I'll rub it in with um, just a, a tissue paper or something. I don't really like uh, tortillions or however you pronounce them. Uh, but yeah, and uh, I'll try to do, as I'm doing here in the shadow, most of the blending by layering. So I'm slowly layering uh, uh, some graphite very lightly. And what happens is that since I have the, the soft support beneath the paper, um, the, the, the paper stops taking in as much graphite, um, and I can be, like, I can have a heavier hand on my second layer and above, 
so um, it makes it really easy uh, to have subtle shifts in value and here I'm just kind of trying to uh, leave those highlighted areas and um, I try to use the putty eraser as much as possible and that's just because the the putty eraser kind of just lifts the graphite uh, it doesn't dig into the pencil as much uh, but once uh, that's not enough uh, I have a, a pencil eraser which is really useful but once you you kind of use this um, the paper um, especially like just regular printer paper it won't take pencil nearly as well um, so this is like kind of the last step and the reason I smudged everything with uh, the tissue paper is so right here as you can see I can uh, draw in uh, these highlights so I'm basically just drawing um, and using the the pencil eraser as I would uh, like a white pencil now for the highlights here I tried to do them realistically but it didn't really work out well and then I couldn't really erase uh, back to white again so instead what I what I did was I darkened uh, the values around them and as you can see in the final image here uh, I think it worked out pretty well so yeah I hope you found the video helpful uh, if you have any questions leave a comment otherwise please consider subscribing or following me on any of my social media sites. I also have a website, and if you want to support me, uh, check out my Patreon.